Hello all you lovely cosmonauts, as always I am Cosmic and today we're going to be reviewing Zenith, an action RPG developed by Infinigen and published by Badland Games. Zenith is essentially an action RPG that is not only coated with humour but laced with it. It is essentially a video game tribute to many many different RPGs and pop culture references. It is full of essentially it's an RPG that takes the fun out of RPGs and that in and itself is well worth a look. Now the game itself places you in the role of Argus Windrill who is essentially an archaeologist, essentially a mage and as Argus you start the game working for the Empire and then later on in the game you have to once again save the world from multitudes of evil etc etc cliche cliche. So I'm going to start by telling you what's good about the game. What is good about Zenith? Well what What's good about it is its story and its humour and its writing. The writing is sometimes purposefully bad. It is full of pop culture and video game culture references that mainly focus on RPGs. I absolutely love all the jokes that they've put in there. They take the fun out of the Final Fantasy series. They take the fun out of all kinds of really famous and beloved video games. And they also, the best thing about it, they take the fun out of the tropes and the mechanisms of those games. So one of my favorite bits at the very start of the game is the fact that you come across this door to the ruins and there's essentially a long-winded puzzle way of solving it. So you have to get a book and you have to find the right phrase and it's essentially the scene out of Lord of the Rings when they're at the Mines of Moria and the Gate of Moria and they have to unlock it using a, essentially a code and a passphrase. And instead of actually trying to do this and sending you off like other RPGs would, sending you off on a quest to find out what's going on and do the puzzle yourself, the Emperor shows up and decides, you know what, I can't be bothered waiting for all this crap, so he gets his airship just to blow the door open. And that just really made me smile because it's just one of those things and the game is full of things like that like that you'll come across th things in the game where it's like in other rpgs you would have to go on a really long form quest to do this or you have to do a puzzle to do this and in this you don't there is time after time after time where as soon as you think oh god i'm gonna have to go and do this or i'm gonna have to backtrack something will happen in a humorous way that just completely negates what you would expect of an RPG in that way. And I really love that about Zenith. It's just so much fun. There's so much humor in there. It really just does take the piss out of RPG tropes round and round and time and time again. And that in itself is just means that the game is packed full of character and charm. It's very entertaining throughout. And I have to say on that side of things, the game is fantastic. Now comes the part where the game is very, very disappointing and is not so fantastic, which is of course the actual game itself. Now, while the game is packed full of humor, it has very funny jokes, references. There's a lot of appearances by various other video game characters that are just references. Ultimately, the actual core gameplay and the mechanics of the game don't work so well, I'm afraid. No, in fact, the game is centered around an action-based RPG. Now, in terms of RPG elements, there's no real character progression other than item progression. So items, you have armor, and then you have weaponry. Now, weaponry can be anything from swords to gloves to um, gems and each weapon essentially works either as a weapon, so a sword is a sword, or it works to correspond to a spell. Now, for example, you have a gem slot, which is essentially your X button, and that essentially can be changed. You can change that with a fire gem or an ice gem, and that will grant you access to a different spell, and you can only use the spells that you have currently equipped. Now, other than that, other than the actual weaponry, you also have armors, and armor essentially works very basic. There's different tiers of armors, and as you equip better armor, that improves your defense and base stats. And other than that, however, there is no real character progression to speak of. It's not particularly 
has any kind of depth to the character progression it's just a very simple straightforward system now that by itself would be okay it wouldn't be too much of a problem sure it lacks a bit of customization and depth but overall it's a straightforward system that works pretty well the problem comes in the form of the actual gameplay itself in terms of the combat because ultimately all you're going doing is you're running around clicking on objects exploring picking up things from chests and then of course for the majority of the actual action part of the game you're fighting enemies and it works more like a brawler than it does an action RPG. It's essentially button mashing and the problem is the controls are not only terrible, and I mean terrible, they are slow, they are sluggish, but you lack some of the very, very basic usability that other action RPGs have, especially with the game design the way it is. This isn't a Diablo style action RPG, this is a more brawler style action RPG, which means that targeting is a massive problem because even using a thumbstick to have 360 degree movement you don't actually have 360 degree movement which means that any of these three enemies coming at you and you can't focus target to cast a spell which means that you only cast in the direction that you're facing which becomes a giant pain in the ass when it comes to accurately trying to cast spells that consistently use your mana and so you've got no mana left you've never not hit any of the targets and then you're in a bit of a problem in terms of avoiding enemy attacks you're able to roll to dodge out of the way and you're also to use a magical shield which do will deplete your mana but again the problem is not in the fact the abilities that you have, the problem is the fact the way they're executed and the clumsiness of the controls. So while you can dodge, dodging one way, you have to face the way you want to dodge, and then so you have to face that way to dodge, and then you have to turn back to cast a spell. Now by the time you've done that, and the slowness of the animations, it means that the fact that the enemy will be right on top of you by the time you've actually completed that dodge, meaning for the fact that you will actually get hit regardless regardless anyway. I have to say that the combat is just terrible. It is just really, really bad. It is not satisfying. It is clumsy. You will die a lot just for the sheerness of the clumsiness of the combat. It's never anything about skill. It's more luck than skill at this point because you're just lucky if you can actually get away without getting hit to the point of death. And that really, really irritates me, I have to say. The character animations aren't that great. They're a little bit clunky, especially with items like the sword where you're supposed to string attacks together and it looks like you're almost taking pictures of freeze frames every time you do it because there's no fluidity to the actual character animations and ultimately it is just a really poor combat and control system i have to say that it is not good in any sense of the word and you will not find it satisfying in any way so ultimately if you're looking at this game thinking oh that looks like interesting combat it isn't so stay away in that regard now ultimately the game doesn't look terrible it looks like a great indie game in terms of graphical fidelity it runs okay it you know looks okay there's it's not stellar it's not triple a but ultimately for an indie game it looks pretty nice it's got a nice charming art style to it some of the terrain doesn't and the textures of the terrain don't look particularly great but you know it's one of those things that it passes its by it does its job very well one thing that does stand out however is the music now there's no actual voice acting in the game but the musical score is ridiculous like you go from like really soft somber tones and the music itself tries to enforce the humor of the game by having like you'll have like really pompous music when the emperor turns up at the very start of the game that is very reminiscent of like final fantasy games and then you get into a boss battle and it's like heavy metal like it's full-on rocking heavy metal death thrash all that fun and the musical score it has no kind of it has no tone to it it's just a collection of different things put together to kind of invoke a bit of smiling so to speak so ultimately you're asking yourself so is this game worth anything at all and it depends i have to say that in terms of its gameplay it isn't it's a bad game by all rights it is the combat is clunky it's just not fun to play at all in any respect and it will become systematically more frustrating as the game progresses now the game itself isn't particularly long in compared to another rpg per se but there is enough combat in there to become very frustrating and for you to hate that combat. That being said, however, if you are looking for an RPG that 
is very funny then you have this here now if you're in more into the story and kind of the humor of the game rather than the gameplay mechanics then you will take something away from this game and ultimately i would recommend it to people who are die-hard rpg lovers if you love rpgs if you love video game RPGs, you know, you love the Final Fantasy series, all that kind of thing, then you will probably get something out of this. You will get a good laugh out of this, no doubt. In particular, there was one instance where you have, like, the heroes of several Final Fantasy games coming to a potion shop to buy potions, and one of them is supposed to be Tidus from Final Fantasy X, and he's like, oh, you know, I need some ether because I'm out of magic, and then the potion guy's like, you know ether doesn't actually give you magic, and the, it, the, the joke continues to the point where Titus is basically drinking ether because, you know, he's depressed that, you know, his girlfriend, quote unquote girlfriend, left him to become a famous singer. And, you know, there's just jokes like that throughout the game that, you know, people like me who love RPGs will get a lot of joy from however if you're not concerned about that kind of thing if you're not concerned about the writing about the jokes and about all the references then as a game goes i would definitely not recommend that you, you pick this up because it is a bad game in terms of mechanics and controls and it is just not worth your time for the price point that being said you know like i've said if you think you will get something out of all the jokes pop culture references and all you know making fun of rpg tropes then the price point is just about right right and it's worth it just to get those laughs and just to see what the game has got in that regard however if you're just looking solely on a mechanical basis do stay away and so that is my review of zenith thank you so much for watching and listening as always let me know what you thought in the comment section below hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and please do share it around and i will as always see you next time